Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my collection series, and today we're going to be talking about my current Game Boy Color collection. Growing up, I didn't really get a lot of the handheld systems. In fact, my first handheld system that I ever got that was an actual system and not a standalone game, like a Tiger Electronics or Space Invaders or that, was actually the Game Boy Color. Um, I got it, I got it on release, actually. And picked it up with I think it was Pokemon Blue, but I really didn't get into the DMG or any of the black and white Game Boys. The Game Boy Color was actually my very first Game Boy, and that's when I got hooked. I got hooked on doing handheld consoles and being able to play basically anywhere, and boy did I play anywhere. I took my Game Boy color to college with me and played it between classes because it was better than doing nothing which was what I would have done between classes anyway. So the Game Boy Color was a handheld game console developed and manufactured by Nintendo released on October 21st 1998. It was the successor to the original Game Boy and was the first Game Boy to feature color graphics. The Game Boy Color was designed to be fully compatible with all of the original Game Boy games, but with the added capability of displaying games in color. It featured a new processor, the Z80, which allowed for more advanced graphics and sound capability. The screen was also slightly larger than the original Game Boy, making it easier to see the game's graphics although the lighting still was kind of an issue. The Game Boy Color was available in a variety of different colors, including Atomic Purple, which is the one I had, Grape, and Teal. It also featured a built-in infrared communication port, allowing players to connect and play games with other Game Boy Color users. Don't really think they made good use of that, but it was still there. The Game Boy Color was a commercial success and sold over 118 million units worldwide. It was discontinued in uh, it was discontinued in 2003, but many of the game released or are still available on Nintendo's Virtual Console service. The Game Boy Color was succeeded by the Game Boy Advance in 2001. Overall, the Game Boy Color was a significant step forward in handheld gaming and paved the way for future handheld consoles such as the Nintendo DS and the Nintendo 3DS. It was a great evolution that allowed players to enjoy the same games, but with a colorful new perspective. And with all of that, guys, let's get on to my current Game Boy Color collection. Okay, first up we've got the Code Breaker. Uh, this was a wonderful little thing. This is a custom case that I made with some foam insert and double sided tape and stuff just to keep it right. And got uh, a manual bag and put the manual in it and stuff. And I went on to the cover project and printed this off. Uh, or well, use the skills that I got there to make this guy, and uh, I, I like it. It works out pretty well. Um, looks good on the on the case or on the shelf. Uh, I was not a early adopter of the Game Boy Color, but again, I've got Battleship. It is not complete. It is a custom game case, obviously, uh, and then. There's the black case, which plays in the normal Game Boy and the Game Boy Color, but I still count these as Game Boy Color games. There's the back. Next. Bionic Commando Elite Force. 
This is a really good Bionic Commando game. I have the manual, another custom game case. This fits really well. Uh, yeah, this is a really good Bionic Commando game. You can play as the guy or the girl. I like playing as the girl just because uh, the animation on the ponytail is like really nice to see. But, you know, a, a very good game and you should check it out. We have Blaster Master Enemy Below. I was a huge Blaster Master fan growing up. Uh, it's another one of the black cartridges that'll play in the old Game Boy, the black and white, and it'll play in the color. Uh, and then here we go. Looks like classic Blaster Master. Um, again, it's by Sunsoft. It's not a terrible game, but I think I prefer the NES version. We have Bomberman Max Blue Champion. Uh, got this because I wanted to be able to play a versus Bomberman on the Game Boy Color uh, through the link cable and stuff, and it's actually pretty fun. Uh, they do a good job of, you know, putting all everything that is Bomberman into this, and of course Hudson Soft had to be involved because it's their property. Here is Crystallis. It's a NES RPG. Unfortunately, I don't have the manual, but there's the cartridge and here's the back. Pretty much plays a lot like the NES game. Up next, Dragon Warrior 1 and 2. I never really got into the Dragon Warrior series. I do have like the map and, and the manual and stuff. It's another black cart. Uh, so it's backwards compatible with the uh, older system, the, the black and white system. And it's actually enhanced for the uh, the Game Boy Player. And I think that's a picture of the Game Boy Player 2, or the Super Game Boy. Um, no, it's just, it looks like it's just for the Super Game Boy. So it's got extra palettes and stuff. It's a really nice touch. Um, I really need to get into this series. And... Dragon Warrior 3. Let's see. There's the manual. Here's the cartridge. And the back. And all of these are in custom game cases because they just look good. There we go. Dragon Warrior Monsters. Again, like I said, I need to get into this series. I have enough of them to justify starting playing them. I just have not found the time yet. This is another Link Cable game. It looks like this is kind of a takeoff of Pokemon where you create, you uh, recruit monsters, level them up, and you battle people because it's got the Link Cable to go player versus player, and you can play it on the Super Game Boy. Here's one of my favorites. Uh, I got this after I had my Zune. Uh, I liked the Hexite game and I wanted to continue to play it, so after my Zune died, I got this, this Game Boy Color version. And it's definitely not you know, as nice. I think it's Zune. It was on the Zune. But um, yeah, it's, it's a fun little puzzle game. I, I really enjoyed it. It was great to play it between classes when I was going to college. And we have Hoyle Card Games. Uh, I really do love card games. Uh, but this is all of the classic Hoyle games. I've got the manual. It's got, you know, some nice backgrounds and stuff and pretty vivid colors. It's a, more of an early style Game Boy Color game because they were trying really hard to find ways to show off that the fact that it has color. It's another weird one. It's a Jerry McGrath Supercross 2000. It's a claim sports don't have the manual, but I do have the cartridge and this wonderful custom game case. Uh, surprisingly good for a, uh, a system that really shouldn't be able to handle it. One of my favorites, Kirby Tilt and Tumble. Now, I've got the manual and I've got the cartridge and you'll notice that it's pink and it's actually kind of big and that's because it's got a tilt sensor. You have to be careful how you play this though because if you play it in uh, in any other way, if the cartridge is not like this while you're playing and stuff, you'll be doing it wrong or backwards, uh, and you'll have like a really, really hard time playing the game. 
Uh, I would suggest playing it on a modified Game Boy Color that has a backlight mod on it. And Lufia, The Legend Returns. I have not played this one yet. I need to play it. I'm a huge Lufia fan, but I want to go back and revisit the series and just start over from the first game and, and continue on. Mega Man Extreme, because everything had to be extreme back then. Uh, it's basically just another Mega Man game. Uh, I think they tried to make this a little bit like Mega Man X4, uh, but you know, trying to squeeze that game onto Game Boy Color is not really possible. And like always, Mega Man Extreme 2. I uh, don't have the manual for this one. There's the cart. Um, Looks like you're, you can play a Zero in this one as well. Uh, this could have been the beginnings of the Mega Man Zero series in the Game Boy Advance. We have oops, Powerpuff Girls Bad Mojo Jojo. I was a Powerpuff Girls fan uh, just because I remember um, seeing the old school Powerpuff Girls and uh, how it was very tongue in cheek. In keeping with that theme, Battle him with the Powerpuff Girls. And once again into the fray, we have Paint the Town Green with the Powerpuff Girls. Uh, each of the girls had their own game. That was kind of interesting to make that happen. Here is one of my favorite, favorite games for the uh, Game Boy Color. This is Power Quest really don't have the manual and that kind of hurts my feelings, but uh, I'm happy to have the game. It's another one of the black carts that's backwards compatible. Uh, it has a link cable. This is a fighting game that is like an adventure fighting game. And you can, there's RPG elements where you can like buy up uh, attack and defense and stamina and power and special moves. It's really a lot of fun. Game Boy Color, Spider-Man. This was back when they were trying to do the Spider-Man for PlayStation, and they wanted to do a 2D Spider-Man. They did a really good job. Activision did not mess this up. They, uh, they really hit it out of the park on this. And uh, Spider-Man 2, uh, the Sinister Six. And again, another great 2D Spider-Man. I won't say it's as good as like Maximum Carnage, but I'm definitely happy with the way that things turned out. Okay, next we have Super Mario Brothers Deluxe. And there's the manual. Uh, I love Super Mario Brothers. Having a deluxe version was like a really nice option and being able to play it on the go. And of course, Tetris DX, because everyone's got to have Tetris. I even have the manual for it. Um, it's Tetris. It, you know, it, it does a link cable, it does the Super Game Boy, it does Game Boy Color. You know, another one of my favorites during college, Top Gear Pocket 2. This is one of the better racers on the uh, Game Boy Color. Um, it's kind of a cheaty kind of look, but it's, it's good. I like it. It was a lot of fun. Next, we have Wario Land 3. I need to get into the Wario Land series and try to finish all of these haven't had a lot of experience with it. I do know that the game works. That's about it. We have Warlocked. Uh, this was one of those like odd strategy style games. I was really, really in love with Final Fantasy Tactics and I needed more of that in my life. And so this was, you know, a buy because it looked like Final Fantasy Tactics. And X-Men Wol Wolverine's Rage. Uh, Wolverine was and is the big time <clears throat> oh, start over Wolverine is and was the big time uh, X-Men character that every kid absolutely idolized next up Zelda oh, uh, <laughs> start over the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX uh this was just a nice like repackaging of the Link's Awakening game so that they could add color and stuff. And I think this was meant more of a showcase piece for Nintendo to show off why you would want a Game Boy Color. 
right? We've got Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. Fortunately, no manual, but I do have the game. And this is a weird game because it has a partner game called Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. Uh, these are both the same game with slight variances, kind of like Pokemon Red and Blue. And it's just a lot of fun. Um, they even have on the advertisement, you know, you should you should have a friend that plays the other version or something like that so that you can both have like the complete adventure and have as much fun as possible. And that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and I look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.